Thank you for, uh, for coming. There's a lot of people here. I'm quite flattered and uh, kind of scared. Um, how, many, uh, how many people would describe themselves as developers here, just out of interest? Oh, that's pretty quite a lot of people. There may be mistakes in my slides, seeing as half of them were written uh, at 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, so feel free to call me up on those with questions after. Um, and uh, when I was writing the presentation, uh, I thought, oh, that, I like that font. It's, uh, it's only all caps, doesn't really work with code or links. So I found a little workaround, should be good. Um, and uh, then I got this graphic in here, and then I thought, well, it doesn't, like, it's always cool, like, oh, hooks. Hooks is like, oh, yeah, like fishing and coat hangers and stuff. Um, doesn't really make sense. So forget about the fishing. Is anyone a fisherman here? Is anyone, can, is anyone good at fishing? Can you, can you catch more than one fish on a hook? Because otherwise it doesn't really work as an analogy. Yes, can. You can? Yeah. Maybe we can use it later. Maybe. All right. Cool. That sounds good. Eat each other. Did I hear that? Um, I've never been fishing, so it's like totally new for me. Uh, anyway. Who am I? Um, for people who don't know me, I am uh, now team lead uh, for WordPress de uh, department at Python Company um, up uh, in the northwest of Copenhagen. Um, I've been working there for about three years, um, and I'm also the uh, founder uh, and organizer at the WordPress Copenhagen meetup group, which some of you know and go to. And that's really great. Um, so we meet up every, every month, apart from uh, when it's Christmas and summer holidays. Um, if you'd like to hold a presentation, I said it yesterday, I'm going to say it again. Please come and see me, because we're, we're running a bit low on, uh, on meetup topics. So uh, please. So um, today, we're going to be talking about hooks. And uh, we're going to go around quite a few examples and uh, Kind of, I'm also going to try to to explain hooks in a way that everyone can kind of follow what it's about. Because the first time you you see one of these hooks in use, you don't really know uh, what it is or how it works. So I hope to to, to help people who are new to WordPress development, and also those who um, who are a little more um, advanced with hooks, because you'd hopefully get a little bit of a clearer understanding. Maybe a few examples that they didn't realise they could use hooks for. Um, so, what is a hook? Um, well, this is what the, the codex page said. Um, it's a hook. Basically, a hook is, in a, is some kind of event. Uh, event meant by us in the observer pattern. Um, and it's invoked by uh, the, one of these two functions, do action or apply filters. So. Uh, Basically, uh, what we can tell from this is there's some kind of event. And when that event happens, we want to do something. Uh, so to translate that into uh, kind of my speak, or less geeky person speak, as I've called it, gives you the means to do something, maybe do something else, uh, or modify existing stuff. That's a good word that us uh, Brits like to use. Um, so. Uh, Basically, uh, if you want to look at it even more generally, hooks allow us to actually go beyond the defaults. When you install WordPress, you get, you get a lot of things out of the box, actually, compared to some other CMSs. Um, and the minute you want to start changing that behavior, you're going to need a hook. Um, and uh, so that's why this is a very essential part of WordPress. And that's why I felt like we needed to, to have a talk about this sooner or later. So, um, as I said uh, before, um, there are basically uh, two, two, two ways that uh, hooks can be uh, actually run. They can be run as an action or as a filter, actually. Um, and actions are all about doing stuff, um, doing something new or doing something in addition to what's being done. Um, so, for example, um, uh, we could use an example of uh, publishing a post. Um, 
when the post is being published, we might want to do something else. Maybe we want to uh, notify somebody. Maybe we want to send that information to another system. There's a lot of things we might want to do. Um, and it could be anything, really. Uh, but the thing is that the hook, this action hook, is giving us the opportunity to actually say that in the core of WordPress code, when, when the post is saved, when the post is published or saved, um, we want to give uh, developers and whoever else who wants to change the way that WordPress behaves, um, uh, basically the opportunity to do something else at the same time. And that could be basically anything in the back end. So virtually every action in the back end uh, has an associated hook. For example, save as draft, adding a menu point, um, adding widgets, deleting stuff. Uh, pretty much anything you can do in the back end has some kind of hooks associated with it that gives us the opportunity to do more or do something else at the same time. And that's the basic way that plugins interact with WordPress. Um, because otherwise, how could a plugin change WordPress's code, WordPress's functionality, uh, without hacking it? And you'd never do that. So there has to be this means of saying, while WordPress is doing this work, we also want WordPress to carry out these additional uh, functions. So let's look a little deeper into action hooks. Um, basically, these, these hooks that are sitting all around in, in WordPress core, and also you'll find them in plugins as well, so you can actually modify plugins without hacking them. Uh, you'll see these, these, these do action calls. Um, and basically, uh, what it does is it defines a hook and says, hey, at this point in the code, I want this hook to fire. And it doesn't, and anyone can add whatever actions they want to it. They will get run at this point. So for example, uh, there's an action hook called updated option. And that fires after an option in, in the database has been updated. So let's say you go into settings and change something there. Um, you'll see that uh, that saves an option in the database. And when that's done, the hook updated option will fire. And then you could do whatever you want with that information. We'll come to an example with that later. So do action is like the placeholder. That's where the hook belongs. An, action, an add action actually adds an action to that hook and says, when we come to that point in the code uh, where the hook is, we want to run these actions. And all an action does, really, is point to a function uh, in your code where you can do stuff. We'll have a look at some examples. But first, um, I always think it's good to use real world examples so that we can understand the kind of concept behind what we're talking about. Um, it kind of, good thing about real world examples is that we can break things down the same way that we would with a WordPress. Um, but it's kind of more entertaining. So I'm going to introduce two of my pet peeves. This is the first one. Uh, in our office, in the roof of our office where we work, it gets really hot when the sun's out. And that is like really annoying. And then you have a battle. Open the windows, close the windows, etc. If you think about it in a WordPress way, uh, you could say, well, when the sun shines, um, I want to actually cool down the office. Why isn't it coming up? Uh, when the sun shines, let's hope it catches up. Uh, when the sun shines, um, at that point, I want to actually have the opportunity to cool down the office and also to close some of the blinds. Otherwise, I'm not going to get any work done. I've actually lost the internet connection. Hmm. All right. Um, so that's what I want to do. So sun shines, then, is, is the event that's happening. And then I've got two actions that I want to add to that event. I want to cool down the office and close some blinds. So to summarize, sunshine, I need a hook. Uh, cool down office and close blinds, they're probably like functions I want to call through this add action. 
So let's have a look at that code. Let's imagine that, uh, I don't know if it's nature or God or whatever that controls the weather, but whatever it is that controls the weather would run this function called sunshine. <laughs> that would then remove the clouds. That somewhere else, I guess, in the system. <laughs> At that point, we know it's sunny. So at that point, we want to we wanna, we wanna say that's where we want to do other stuff. Um, then, we want to cool down the office. So I build a little function for this that makes sure that if the temperature is too high, we try to get the aircon get down to 18 degrees again. Um, but we only want this to run if it's sunny, because, uh, I don't know, that sounds a bit weird, because obviously you, also, you always want it to be the right temperature. But this is the example. Bear with me. Um, Thing is, there's no way to bind these things together. That's what we need. That's what we use the add action for. Now, now we're making it happen because we're saying that we're now adding an action to the hook. We're saying add action. The hook name is Sunny. That's the one we've defined up there. Uh, that's the one that God or nature defined. Um, when uh, when that action when that hook is fired, we want to cool down the office. That's the second attribute in add action. And uh, the third one is a priority. I've given it priority one because it's really important, otherwise I get no work done. So, um, so that's a very, uh, very simple conceptual idea behind uh, action hooks. I'm actually saying when something's happening, I'm going to do something else. Oh, and by the way, I wanted to close the blinds as well. Um, if it wants to actually update. Great. <laughs> it's going really well. Ah, oh, that looked good. OK, um, so there was also a function there to close the blinds, but it's exactly the same concept as, um, as cooling down the, the aircon. So let's now have a look at some, uh, some actual WordPress uh, examples, very typical examples that you see uh, in WordPress. Like, for example, um, we often want to have excerpts on pages, um, and they're only on posts you know, where you can write a, a summary that gets used, say, in lists or at the top of uh, your content. We often want those uh, on pages as well. They're not, they're not, uh, they're not enabled there. So, um, so in this case, we say, well, once WordPress is initialized, then we just need to add this, uh, add this support for excerpts to pages. Pretty simple. And that init uh, hook is, is deep down in the WordPress uh, core. And all of these examples I'm going to show, those uh, you can actually find out where they are and uh, see exactly when they're fired. Um, but this one's a pretty, uh, yeah, pretty simple one. We know at that point that, that pages are loaded and post type support is loaded and everything's ready. So that's a good time to, to add the support for that. So um, the next example is uh, basically uh, forcing. Um, WordPress to include other post types in search. Let's say, for example, you have a plugin that has added a new type, say, movies, um, but they haven't enabled the, uh, the search for that. So when people do a site search, no movies come up. I want a quick fix for that. So basically, this will say, uh, this uses a very uh, commonly used hook called pre-get posts. And that basically is a really uh, clever, but also very dangerous uh, hook, because uh, it actually says for every main query in WordPress. So let's say, for example, in this case, we're looking at a list uh, search result list. Um, and that has, obviously, a query from the database that is run to, to actually build the list. And this actually goes in and uh, messes around with the query and allows you to change the query. Uh, you can see here that um, in this case, uh, in this hook, we have a query variable. Uh, and that is the actual query as it's set up. So that would be what you would get if you didn't have this. So that would be your search results as, as an object. 
Um, so all this is doing is it's saying, uh, well, let's make sure that we're not in the administration panel and we're making sure that this is, uh, uh, this is the main query and not another query we've made. And we're making sure that we're on the search page because we don't want to screw up any other pages. Then, then we set the post type of the query to posts, pages, and movies. And uh, that is how that works. Um, so in this case, we're actually getting some data, and that data is coming from the, the, the do action in this case. It just sends the actual query to the actions where, uh, where you're doing your work, so you can actually use that. That's uh, very handy. And in this example, we have the same thing. This is a very simple uh, notification um, when it comes up on the screen. Uh, <laughs> I can actually just switch over to just showing my screen, maybe. Because that is kind of annoying. Bear with me a moment. I have to cancel this and then... Uh Take this one instead. <coughs> like break my back doing it. Oh. <coughs> Yay. So let's carry on. Um, so in this case, uh, when someone uh, publishes a post, I want to get a notification because I'm a control freak. Um, so that's what this one does. Uh, very simple. Again, uh, publish post actually sends the post information to the, uh, the, hook, the, uh, the functions that you want to run, uh, which is really handy. Um, so again, that comes in with, uh, with add action. If there's a lot of, uh, if there's a lot of stuff that, that needs to come into the, the function, then you have to actually specify if there's more than two, um, two variables that need to come, come in. We'll look at that, that, syntax, that syntax a little bit later. Um, but basically all this does is says, well, when, it publishes, when you publish a post, run this function and uh, send a mail to me. Uh, and that's basically it, kind of similar. Um, now we're getting into a more complex example. So uh, I've had a few customers where uh, they've gone in and changed settings, um, and then uh, got a phone call from them, and they said, uh, oh, the site's ruined. And it's because they've gone and changed something just in the settings somewhere, something really, uh, yeah, something really simple. They've deleted a widget or something, and they didn't know who did it. So I thought, well, you could always create a little uh, plugin or something that actually uh, logs who changes these things. You know, we have the revisions in posts. Why not a options revisions log? thing. So this uh, basically says, well, uh, luckily for us, there's a hook that we'll see at the end of this, which, uh, which basically says, um, uh, after the options updated, uh, that's where the hook is. And the data you get, the data the day that actually comes with that is the, uh, the name of the option the uh, previous value and the new value, and that's exactly what we need to make a log, so we can see, okay, that's what the setting was before, and it was changed to that, and it was changed by this person. So that's, that's exactly what we need. First of all, um, as usual with these hooks, you need to make sure you're in the right place and doing the right thing. So uh, first of all, we're checking to see if, uh, if the value's been changed or if it's just somehow been saved again. 
Um, and we're also going to have a look and uh, see if it has an underscore, uh, because then it's something to do with caching, and we don't want to bother logging that. And it continues here. Uh, so basically, uh, how this works is I created yet another option to save the log. So first of all, we go and get the log. Um, then we basically find out who is the user that is changing this. We need that information so we can blame them for ruining our site. Um, and then, uh, yeah, well then uh, we build up a little, a little entry for the log, and we need what the options call, the old value, the values that it's been changed to. This could be, for example, a simple one example would be page for posts. Let's say that they had a static front page with like a, I don't know what it might be, and they changed it out to show the latest posts on the front page, and that's not what the customer wanted, but someone did it anyway. Then uh, we would know that that's what it was, uh, and the user's ID and the time that they did it, also handy. Because uh, then I could say, well, uh, this person did it at this time on this day, and they changed it from this to this. That's exactly what we want. Um, so if, once we've got that information, we can then add it to the existing data in the log. We do that with this array on shift. Uh, and then uh, I thought, well, this could just go on forever. You could end up with 10,000 log items very quickly. You could end up uh, really blowing your database. So I decided to put some kind of limit. If it's more than 200, then it just chucks the oldest one off the end. It's kind of a neat little trick. So it's only the last 200 items. So if they're adding a lot of stuff, this isn't going to help. Um, and then, uh, yeah, well, then we are updating. Then we're updating the option uh, with the new log. So this option is going to keep an eye on, on what users are doing. And there's not much code in this, and I've managed to uh, put this together in a pretty short space of time. There's another part of it, which is actually displaying the log in the back end. That's just the admin page thing, which I'm not going to go into now. Um, but here you can see uh, a little bit different, because we're saying uh, on the hook updated option, we want to uh, run the function option logger, which is this one we just had a look through. Um, and we have a priority of 10, and there's three, uh, three bits of data that, that, uh, that go with it. And that is uh, the option, the old value and the new value. So that's kind of neat. Um, so let's have a little bit of a summary of actions. And a lot of the things with actions also apply to filters, which is the other type we're going to talk about. So uh, just to summarize how this works, you add an action by saying, well, um, it's this tag. They call it tag. I don't know. For me, it's just the hook. It's the hook name. Um, and then it's the function you want to add to that hook, and the priority. And if there's some accepted arguments and I'm incorrect, there's actually only one accepted argument that you can send. But if you want to send a lot of different bits of data, then uh, then basically, uh, you, uh, if it more than one bit of data comes from the do action, then you want to be able to include that. That's a bit of a gotcha, because sometimes the do action gives you a lot of arguments, but you haven't gone and defined how many arguments can actually be used in add action, and then you, you miss some data that otherwise would, would come into your function. Um, and then do action uh, is basically just defining what the hook is. And then, like I said before, you can send data to all of these functions you want to run to all of, uh, via add action. Hope that makes sense. And a word about priority, this is quite smart. If you, uh, to help to sort of understand it, you can visualize the, um, the, the do action as a kind of bucket into which you throw these add actions that then call functions. Are you with me? <laughs> um, <laughs> so basically, uh, what we're looking at here would be uh, four functions that do stuff when, uh, when the hook called hook is called. Um, the priority there is uh, pretty simple. It doesn't matter when these uh, things are added via add action, because the priority will uh, just um, adjust like that, and uh, then they'll get run in the correct order. Um, so you can think of it, you can sort of think about hooks as a queue. You're adding stuff to the queue, and then it's getting run in one go in the correct order. Let's look at the other side more briefly, um, so I don't run out of time. Um, 
the other side of it is filtering. We just looked at uh, doing something. And typically, when you do something, you don't need to send any information back to the do action. Uh, in fact, you can't really. Um, because you're just doing something, and that's it. Then you're done. With a uh, filter, filters are typically about taking some, some information, some data that already exists, transforming it, changing it, adding stuff to it, and then sending it back to where it came from. So this is uh, almost like a translation exercise. And there's, these filters are all over the place. Uh, especially, you'll especially find them um, on the, when you're dealing with, uh, with front-end tasks, like men working with menus and things like that. So uh, this looks kind of familiar, right? Add filter that hooks um, a function onto a filter hook. And then apply filters is the one you'll see in the core and various other places and in plugins where it actually uh, collects the stuff that you add via add filter. Uh, the big difference being that um, typically uh, you're going to want to actually use that information. Uh, so typically uh, after the apply filters is run, you'll also be returning it back to the browser. Uh, and that's kind of a typical use case. Um, is that uh, you can think of um, you can think of filters as a place to change things between the database and the, the view. Uh, that's kind of a, a useful way to think about it. Let's have a look at uh, one of my amazing conceptual examples. This is this is not my the building where I live. I didn't have a photo of that. Um, so what I find when I'm at home in the evening is. I'm sitting there, I'm with my phone, my wife is sitting there with her iPad, and someone says something and the other one doesn't hear it, and then the other one says something and the other one doesn't hear it. I thought, enough, enough. We're going to fix this once and for all by doing this. So we're going to edit what we say, uh, we're going to shout everything out, and we're going to say, listen to me. And then hopefully the other person might actually hear what, what, what we say. It's a pretty good idea, like, uh, especially for us. So, um, so there's an event, like someone's about to speak. Um, and there's some content. It's what I'm about to say. And basically uh, what we want to do is we want to add a bit to the start of what I say. In this case, I want to shout at my wife and say, listen to me. And I want to shout everything. So I want to make everything uppercase to kind of express shouting, <laughs> right? Just like my presentation is it's all in uppercase. Got to love it. Um, how would that look? Well, basically, um, this is where I'm de dealing with the content. So I'm going to say something, but before I actually say it, I want to actually have the opportunity to uh, add, modify what I'm going to say. That's where the apply filters comes in. And uh, first of all, you've got the name of the hook, which is called uh, the speech, and uh, the content, which is what I'm about to say. Uh, so what do I want to do with what I'm saying? I want to uh, I want to add listen to me at the start with an exclamation mark. Uh, so that's a little function for that. And um, so then I hook it in with add filter. I say, well, the hook is called the speech. I want uh, my wife to listen to me. So I run that little function called listen to me. And it's, it's the first thing I want, uh, I want to happen when I'm about to speak. That would be pretty cool. There's another one, uh, which is kind of similar. So here, I'm again, I'm taking the content of what I'm saying. Uh, I'm using a string to upper to make the content uppercase. So I'm shouting. Uh, this works. Like, um, and uh, I'm going to do that after the other one because I want listen to me to be an uppercase too. So there's a simple sort of conceptual example of priority in hooks. Um, I've done that on purpose so that listen to me is also uppercase. Right? With it? Yeah. Well, um, now let's get into some real WordPress examples. Uh, this is an absolute classic that a lot of you probably have seen. Read more. Um, a lot of uh, times you'll find read more. Um, basically, this is just where you get an automatic uh, summary of or the first bit of the text in a list. Say so, yeah, search, search results, typical example. 
you get a little bit of text, and then you get dot, dot, dot. And sometimes you get some little brackets and, and dot, dot, dot inside the brackets. And it's like, I'm not sure if that makes sense to the American market, but to my, in my eyes, like brackets dot, dot, dot just seems odd. Uh, does anyone disagree? <laughs> so in this case, I just wanted dot, dot, dot. Maybe you wanted to make return like a link um, instead. Uh, you could do that, like a read more or a link. Um, so this is just making sure that we don't, uh, we don't have uh, the bracket dot, dot, dot thing going on. Um, yeah, and, and it says more up there, that the variable called more. That's what more would be by default. So here I'm just replacing it. I'm just saying, no, return something completely different. So I'm, I'm actually replacing content that would otherwise have come out on the page. Um, and here's a simple example. Um, on this list here, it did say uh, bracket dot 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 before. I added that function, and now it's just saying dot dot dot. That's handy. Um, same site where I was working on it. And what I had is I had uh, several sites that used exactly the same theme. And that was cool, because I just had to build one theme. Nice. But uh, they wanted a few visual variations. And I'm not talking about code, HTML, or anything. I'm just talking about some variations to the CSS, a few, a few bits of CSS. Uh, that would have been kind of silly to make a child theme for, because we're talking about a couple of rules, right? So why not just build them into the theme? Uh, this, uh, this basically just adds a new class to the body that uh, includes the site's name uh, sanitized, so it just has like, so it doesn't have spaces in, um, and it's lowercase. And uh, yeah, that's it. So basically, in this filter, we start by getting, well, the, uh, the apply filters hook <laughs> provides the classes that would be added to the body by default. And that's cool, because I want the other ones there as well. I want to know if it's a page or a post or whatever in the body tag. Uh, but that also gives me the opportunity to add to that array of classes that are going to get spat out on the page. And here I'm adding uh, site dash and the site's name sanitized. And I'm just returning the classes again. So I'm not modifying the existing ones. I'm just adding, and then I'm returning it back, saying, OK, yeah, OK, it's fine. Uh, I just want to also add the site title to it. Yeah, so that's a pretty nice example. That then allowed me to write a few CSS rules in my theme, so I didn't have to make a child theme, and that's really good. Um, so yeah, well, the title's wrong. Is it? No. <laughs> um, yeah, this is sort of similar to the other one, right? With, uh, we're talking about excerpts again, and this is a sort of classic classic thing that we meet with uh, all these excerpts. People are very kind of like, they, they, want, they want there to be a bit more control over these, these things. Um, so basically, uh, a lot of our customers, they, they always want this excerpt field. They don't want to have to go into screen options and say, show me the excerpt field. Um, because that's a user, I don't know if you know, like that's actually a user-specific option, screen options. So. You have to actively go in and say, oh, I want to see excerpt as well, because I want to write a custom excerpt. I don't want to just have auto-generated first three lines of my post. So this is a bit of a long-winded way to, uh, to make uh, excerpts um, always show up. It, it doesn't matter what they use in screen options, right? So I'm actually modifying the, the, the core behavior. And it's a bit long-winded. Uh, basically, I'm just uh, removing it from the list of, uh, of hidden stuff in the screen options. So it's kind of like opposite. I want to show it, so I want to remove it from the list of hidden stuff. Um, yeah, and this, also, this thankfully, this also sends, uh, sends screen into, uh, into your function. And that means that you can check if, uh, if you're on a, a post uh, edit screen. So we're not trying to do things on other screens in the admin that don't make sense. So let's have a look at the summary of filters. So it's very similar to uh, actions, really. Um, and basically, you've got the, the tag, the hook name, and then the 
function you want to run, the priority again, and how many uh, arguments you're going to send. And that's an imp a very important one here because we're typically changing some content and sending it back. Apply filters, uh, again, it's just the hook name and then whatever information you want to, uh, to give uh, the opportunity to actually change. Um, by the way, the developer WordPress.org is, is getting really good now as a reference source. Um, there's also a lot of information in the codex on WordPress.org, but I'm finding a few inconsistencies there now. So I also think the, uh, the sort of clean technical documentation is actually better now on, uh, on developer WordPress.org. So, but have a look both places, and uh, you can read up on it in those two places. So I was sort of thinking, well, why is this, why, why is this presentation important? Uh, on a very basic level, it's important because if we didn't have these hooks, we'd kind of be in trouble with how everyone will use this WordPress, right? Because maybe if we didn't have hooks, we could make slightly different themes. Maybe we could, we could obviously change the CSS. Maybe there'd be a way of creating different themes. Maybe we could uh, kind of position some, some elements on the page. Yeah, pretty good. But... Uh, the problem is uh, there's kind of like some black boxes that we can't go in and change. For example, here we've got uh, the content here in this middle one. That's just the content. What does that look like? It just says the content. Like, whereas if we had a hook, we could say, hmm, just look through that content and just make these changes. Uh, there's a dictionary plugin which uh, highlights words where there's definitions, and we want to go through the content and add those in as well and all kinds of other things. Well, as soon as you have a wish about the content, sorry, but uh, there's no way to do any processing of the content. So you're out of luck. It is what it is. So uh, even though you'll be able to maybe work a bit on the general layout of the site, you wouldn't really be able to do anything that's non-standard. Um, so a CMS without hooks or a way to go in and actually modify how the system works by default would be kind of boring you would actually you'd run into several problems because customers would start asking you to do things. Oh, couldn't you just change the way this works in the administration panel? Or couldn't you just, uh, just change a bit the way that this is displayed? Like, I just want to put something uh, in the text there. Or, you know, you'd have to say, um, no, sorry. The system doesn't allow it. And then people would say, well, I, I wouldn't mind a web shop. Mm. Better we use another system and just link to it because we can't really integrate anything into WordPress, you know, because there's no way to connect anything to WordPress. Like, forget it. It would become a very bland system, very fixed system. Um, and that's why there's basically no CMSs that don't have some form of hooks or an alternative to hooks that makes sense. We don't want a bland system. That's why we're happy. If you haven't explored hooks and maybe started to use them for something, don't be afraid. You can't ruin stuff, really. <laughs> you can maybe ruin how stuff is shown. Maybe you can make some changes to the database that you didn't want to make if you're doing some crazy actions. But that's unlikely when you, when you start out, right? Um, start off by just opening some plugins. Every single plugin is based off the idea that it hooks into WordPress and changes stuff or adds stuff, open up these plugins. Have a look through how they work and have a look at which hooks they use to go and add the functionality that, that the plugin adds. And go and write a plugin because you can just make a plugin with one file. Exactly the examples I just showed. You can just have a file with, a, with the definition of the plugin at the top. Uh, you can then just have a function and a hook. So you can make little changes with little plugins. That's a really good way to get started with uh, WordPress development. And then I was a little bit in on this uh, before with child themes. Um, there are some cases, uh, like the example I gave, where it's tempting to, as a sort of themer to think, oh, well, I just need a child theme because then I can change these things um, by overriding these files. and. Uh, Sometimes it's nice to, to make child themes, but sometimes if you look at it once you understand hooks, it would actually be easier, like in my example there, 
to just uh, make a little hook instead. So try and make a little plugin with a little hook. Uh, exactly, for example, um, yeah, it could be anything. It could be, for example, you might have a theme that you uh, reuse on different sites, but the menu needs to behave slightly differently. Well, you don't have to necessarily create a child theme and replace the file that, that, that works on the menu. You might be able to uh, manipulate the menu items using a filter instead. And that would save you creating a child theme. And that's a neater option, um, I would have to say. So basically, to sum up, do you want to do something different than what WordPress offers as standard? And by the way, WordPress itself, looking at code, is full of hooks. It's actually organized all around this whole hook universe. So WordPress wouldn't exist without hooks. Do you want to do something different than what WordPress does by default? Then uh, you need a hook. And most likely, there's a hook for that. So thanks for listening, and uh, I can take any questions. Thank you, James. Do we have any questions? Prioritizing. Um, yeah. Does that prioritize within your own plugin, or will it prioritize all the calls? And is this how plugins kill off each other's functions? Or? This is exactly how plugins can kill off each other's functions. Ways uh, to avoid that? <laughs> no, not really. It's a very open. Uh, it's a very open solution because. Um, the prioritizations just go into one massive bucket, and then they just get run uh, at a later point. So all your plugins run here, blah, 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 blah. And then eventually, uh, you hit in the code um, a, uh, a um, do action, and then it all gets run at the same time. So you are. What happens if you have two, two level ones? Ha. Yeah, then it depends on the order of, uh, of them in terms of how they're actually loaded in. And that can cause issues, definitely. Um, good question. I believe it's the first, first one. Is that right? Yeah. First one wins. The first one that, that, that it meets when you're actually generating uh, the page through WordPress, basically. Other questions? So it, it's, it's nice to know there's a hook for, for, for almost everything, but, but how do you find the right one? I think that's, that's an interesting question. Yeah, that can be, uh, that can be a challenge because there are hooks everywhere in WordPress. Um, the only, there's two ways I've found to do that. Uh, no, three ways. <laughs> um, there's the least geeky way, and uh, then there's the uh, kind of less, ge less, less geeky way, and then there's the <laughs> most geeky way. <laughs> the, the most simple, simplest way to do it is, of course, to, uh, to just Google stuff, because most likely, other people have used the hook that you want. So you just have to find a way to describe what it is you want. And you are bound to, to come into uh, Snack Overflow or something similar where someone's used the hook you want. Um, and I do that a lot. And that's why you end up with uh, 30 tabs in your browser, right? Um, the second way is to go into the WordPress codex. They have a lot of lists in there. You can just search for WordPress codex. Um, they have a lot of lists of hooks and what they do and where they're fired. Tell you a little bit about what kind of event it is that they're actually uh, next to or before or after. Um, and the, uh, the third way is to actually find out in the core code of WordPress uh, where is the feature that I want to hook into and, and change or add to, uh, where you can actually look through the f literally look through the files and try and find a uh, do action or apply filters figure out what it is, and then use it. And that's the, that's the more hardcore way to do it. The questions? Actually, I have a follow-up to that. Um, if I'm a new developer, and I want to get started in uh, using hooks even more, uh, I could go into the code reference and look for hooks. But are there any really center, like really important hooks that I should know about? You showed the init hook and the pre-get post. Do you have more like hooks that would be uh, really important for you to know? Um, yeah, it's good to know what's happening with the init hook, I think, because 
So many things use that init hook. Uh, and there's also, uh, basically, what you need to be aware of is um, that there's actually quite a lot of these sort of initialization hooks. And they, they fire in a certain order. Um, for example, there's also plugins loaded, uh, theme loaded, and various other ones. I don't really have full understanding of exactly what the order is. But sometimes when you get an issue with prioritization, for example, then it could be that you should be using uh, something else. It could be that often you find that, uh, for example, you're doing something where it says, oh, that doesn't exist. That that's doesn't, doesn't exist in the code. Probably because you're firing it on a hook that's too early. Um, so I think all the initialization hooks are a good, good one. And the other one is um, uh, the scripts hooks, um, like admin scripts. And what's the other one? What are they called? Enqueuers. In queue, yeah. thank you. In queue scripts. Because they're necessary if you want to add uh, CSS and JavaScript files to your, to, your, uh, to your head. And you can also use uh, WP head uh, hook to add other stuff to your head. So those are very typical and pretty good to know. Thank you, James. Thank you.